So if we travel to speed of sound, the sound waves are never able to get away or get in front of the object. So right now, this will put the blue ball moving at the speed of sound. And what we can see happening here is the front wave of the sound never gets in front of the object. It stays right with it the whole time. And you end up with all of these sound waves then kind of adding up right here. That's a little bit their day about when you have constructive interference and you get louder and bigger. All of this huge front here is constructive interference. And so when there's a big front passes you, that's when you hear the sound of boom. It's a pass through and you hear a really super loud effect. You hear all those waves adding up just like that. And then behind it, there's the little bit of noise. But where all the waves add up, where it's kind of boom, you do the same thing with it, and maybe go like at Mach, maybe at Mach 2. And then the sound waves don't stay just on the nose of the plane, they're going to end up like behind the plane, or in this crazy kind of cone type thing. And then these lines here, you trace those diagonals backwards, that's when you hear the sound boom. That's all the waves that are overlap. So you're standing right there, and the, this line, you make a line right up here past you, that's when you hear the sound boom. Yeah. Yeah. Because of all the like, sound waves that end up all around. Mm, as opposed to, I'm not, you know, I'm not actually sure. I've spent a lot of time reading about sound waves that still kind of baffle me. Uh, I'm not really sure what it sounds like. If you, if you just like crack, or if it'd be just a really loud roar for a second. I'm not sure if I'd like to hear the sound boom. Like, I'll let you both know if it's a sound boom. It's really, you know. The, the three, you know like ask the white staff on the plunger happens. But I'm not sure if it's an airplane that's right back at Mach 1 or Mach 2. I'm not sure exactly what it's going to sound like. And I can't find one to describe it. I've read and talked about it, but I'm not really sure what it's going to be. From looking at this, you're going to just hear a really loud noise fly past you all, all of a sudden. If I'm standing here, all those waves, like the waves only hit me at one spot. So it's going to be all these ones that are hitting me that add it up together. Okay, they're going to keep compressing and adding up new sounds. Okay. Yeah. Now, for who? The rider or for the observer? Huh. Well, if the observer is standing right where it happened, well, the observer would only hear it once. Yeah, right. Like, Well, if you were on the plane and would only hear it once, there's not all the sound waves that are behind you. Yeah. But I think if I was standing here watching the order to just watching this at the time, I would still hear it one more together. But I'm not really sure. I mean, I've, I've read stuff like that too, but I've also read like different, I've read full things, and I've never, I don't really, I don't know if anyone's going to make it full, I'm not really sure. Knowing the motion, you know. Good, good. Um, I think they're violently vibrating air particles. Air, air particles vibrating really fast and they hit it, you know, like a, a, a crystal glass kind of thing. Yeah. Right. Now there's there's a certain, I don't know if we need too much into this, but there's a certain, everything in the world is a certain frequency that it naturally wants to vibrate at, like where it's going to vibrate the most. The best example you do is like a swing. If you're on a swing and you pump your legs at the right time, you go faster and higher and higher and higher, right? If you pump your legs at the wrong time, then you get nothing out of it. And so the swing is what they call a natural frequency when you should add you should pump the leg. Crystal has the same kind of idea. So if you're singing a note at the right frequency and the glass has the same natural frequency, it's going to shadow. There is a bridge in Washington, the Tacoma Narrow Bridge, the very famous example, might be a picture of the book of it, where the wind happened to be making the bridge shape at just the right frequency, it was at the natural frequency, and it caused the whole bridge to crumble. And so now they're built bridges out of like multiple materials, so they can't just be one like frequency where it's going to bring that. So my soldier tricks definitely have to walk across bridges for some reason. You don't want one piece of metal and to try to bridge too much. Um, so yeah, Tesla, Nikola Tesla, I mean, I know all these are very interesting. 
my second or third favorite. Yes, custom coils and black and stuff. We've been basically invented or figured out how to make alternating current power that we use now and you know, so that is not particularly often that's very good. Um, but long story short, he was also kind of a wet dude. And he tried to make this device, the great episode of the new about this. Like, you want it? Um, where he tried to make a machine that would oscillate at a certain speed, a big metal rod that would oscillate up and down at a certain speed. And he claimed to put it in the middle of the building, and if he oscillated that and see it right through the whole building would collapse. And the Mythbusters tried like, to build one, and they built one, and they put it on a grid, and made the grid wobble a little bit, but it didn't make it collapse or anything, so it kind of, um, kind of worked, but not really. I don't know if you have it, not that good. It's just the way it is. Everything has one, essentially. Yeah. See, having said that, I mean, once you have like multiple, multiple, multiple materials inside of you, I don't know if you do anymore. But like, I mean, the string, I think the string, I don't know, the natural people can go to the ones that the standing wave shows up at. And there's, you can have several like different octaves of that same natural frequency. But yeah, only certain ones in the world show up. So, keep going. Um, so that's the Doppler effect in sonic streams. I tried to learn, I tried to learn more about that. But sometimes people don't. Um, okay, one more thing I want to talk about since we have time. We got in this conversation in the first period, and I just think it's interesting. Try and geeky up a little bit. Unless there's other questions about stuff we've actually talked about. Okay, we talked a little bit about the blue ray discs the other day, correct? We talked about uh, that the blue rays are better because they make smaller groups, right? And so we said that the blue laser doesn't have any inherent ability to better view the data, it's just it's smaller. I don't know that. Lastly, one well, other thing I'm talking about is because maybe you know the one before. Do you guys know what binary is? One zero. Maybe there's more than